Hi, this is Anne with Fiber Designs by Anne, and I'm going to paint a tree on fabric. And I've never done this type of tree painting on fabric. This could be a patch used for a lot of different things. I'm using Jacquard textile color for my my paints. I'm using a yellow, an apple green, a raw umber, and a burnt umber. I might also use a little black and a little gray because I was using that earlier for a sky painting. I'm using these cheesy brushes, that one I've used already, and they should work fine for this. I may actually use a foam, let me grab a foam brush here. I'm going to try this for the trunk. I have not done this and I think I'll probably end up using the other brush, but just just to begin with. My fabric is dry at this point. I do have a spray mist bottle in case I'm, or when I get to the point where I want it wet, which I'm going to do. I'm going to start by taking some of the brown. I'll show you my, um, I've got a little challenge right now. I'm one-handed, so um, mostly one-handed. So I've got a little bit of the the burnt umber and the raw, which is kind of awful looking. My paints are a little bit old, I think, but it should be okay. And I'm tapping the point of my black brush into the brown. You could use any brown, of course. And this may be too dry, I'm thinking, but we're going to give it a try anyway. Let me wipe some of that off. I'm just going to pull it Pull it. Give us some suggestions. A one inch brush would have, a foam brush would have been better. I'm just, this is going to probably be covered up anyway, but. Just a little suggestion. This is with the darker brown umber and the raw umber, raw umber, I should say. I'm going to pull it on this side. Just bring it down. We'll let that set for a minute. The paint on dry fabric will pretty much stay where it is especially if I heat set this or dry it already, but I'm, I'm going to play. So I'm not going to be too worried about what happens here. And that bottle is not working so well, so I'm going to switch to a bigger bottle. Let's see if I can get it to mist instead of squirting. I don't think so. Okay, that's going to make a difference, so I'm going to go back to my... I've got to find my other bottle. I'm going to just get this background wet. And with the tree, it probably would be okay if it was spotty. This may move that brown a little, especially if I touch it with a brush or anything. I'm going to go ahead and get one of my brushes wet while I'm here. It's been easier to dip that in something, I'm sure. Now the fabric will stretch a little in the hoop now, and I'm using a hoop just because it's easier than putting this onto my regular stretcher frame, which would be my preference, of course. And also this looks like wasted fabric, but I love painting leaves, so that's what I could do with the, with the fabric if I was worried about wasting it. Or I can turn this into a pillow, or I don't know what. And I'm going to see what happens when I brush my brush. See, I lose that that to get all together. So I'm going to just drag them into the direction of the tree. I'm going to leave the trunk alone for right now. Although I may just play a little with my finger because that's what I like to do. And just pull it out a little bit. Get my, get the, a little bit of that brown on the corner of this. And you can see it's sort of starting to, starting to sag. So I would normally pull that. I'm not sure I'll be able to do that, but we'll just kind of, we're just playing here. Let's make a pretty tree. That's good. Okay, so I'm going to leave that for now, and I'm going to take my brush, and I'm I'm not a big fan of this green I have. It's very apple green. 
and I'm going to pull a little of it onto a brush that has a little bit of brown and it's left over from a gray sky I was painting so it's got a little bit of that so I'm just muddying that green up a little bit Let's see if I can hold this up and show you just muddying my green up a little bit there I do have some black in, on this palette, which I could use as well, but I don't think I want to go quite that dark. I think the brown will do the trick for me. Then I'm going to take it, and it's not real blended on here. I'm going to take it, and I'll just start in here. And I'm just pouncing. This is the, the more spread out your brush is kind of the better for this job. And you can do this on, on the dry fabric as well. It might give you even a better, a better look to it. But I'm going to be okay with this part blending out a little bit. So I'm sort of working on the darker and the shadow parts. And, and then after this, when I'm happy with this, I'll go ahead and pull up the yellow and probably with the same brush and just go ahead and use it because it has the green on it. I'm not sure how big I want to go with this tree. I'm just sort of looking for some kind of natural balance in the appearance of it. And if I tap up in the in the dry, it, it will look a little different. And if they're all starting to look kind of the same, the little leaves here, I'm going to Twist my brush a little bit more, but you can see what a nice leafy effect that's giving. Might have that darker bit down toward the bottom, maybe even put some brown in there because if that's the appearance of a little bit of a branch coming through. Or leaves that are a little a little drier, a little more dead. I see that this is a stronger because my, my paint is mushed a little bit more, so I'm going to see if I can mix up a little bit more with the green and the brown and not blend it as much so that it's more distinct on my brush and see if I can get that yeah that same effect a little bit more I didn't blend it quite enough but you can blend a lot on your fabric and I'm going to go toward the maybe some of the places under underneath in here just a little more of the dark see just about anything in a tree so you really can't go wrong yeah, I'm liking that I'm not going to go any further up because the fabric is dry there and I'll have a distinct line where that is um, although I might with the yellow so now I'm going to take the same brush and I'm going to just tap it in my yellow and if it's too much, much mud, I'll, uh, which I'm going to do because I can see that it is. And I probably didn't want all that light on that side at the bottom. I'm going to go ahead and grab an, a brush that hasn't been in any other color yet and put it in the yellow. There. That was too thick. I don't know if you can see that. It, it was too thick and too heavy. I'm going to just leave that for now. My, my palette's a little small where my yellow is, so I'm not getting a good uh, blend on my brush. And I'm going to just go about doing that, though. Just tap that yellow, bring it out. That's where the light is, of course. So I'm just going to bring that out. Some in the middle, of course. I might tap on there, see if I can lift some of that paint up, because it's fine. This can be a tree that's not just light. It's not just where the light is but it's um, yellow leaves. I don't know if you can hear this. I have a bird nesting outside. And she, she was just 
she's sitting on a nest, sitting on eggs, and her mate was feeding her, so they make a lot of noise when that goes on. It's pretty fun. Okay, I think if this dries, I could I could add more paint. I don't really want it to be heavier, though. I like my fabric to remain pretty much like fabric. So I'm going to not add a bunch more in there. I'm going to bring this out a little bit more. And I think I will add some more yellow. Then my, my balance of my tree seems a little off. So I'm going to just add a little more yellow out here. And then I'll put some green... Add some green back into that. And that's very much too green, but it could work because this is a fabric tree and it can be any way I want it to, to look. I'm gonna tilt this because I can see that there, because it's wet, there's some glare going on. It might make it hard for you to see. And blend that green out a little bit with this original green that I was using. And so it's not just yellow sticking off of the edges like that. And of course, what I would do was would be stitching on this so it doesn't have to be perfect because I will add some thread work to it. I'm going to add a little more dark. My paint, my brush fell into my black paint, and I'm going to just see what happens if I put some black down here. It's it's blended black, so it's a little browny, greeny black, but I'm going to just pull that down in the bottom a little bit. Can make a direction, of course, with the brush. Well, that's pretty fun. I like that. I might take my my brown again and just draw a little bit of branches here and there. So it just gives the whoops suggestion. Let's get rid of that for a minute. A little too much pulling on that one. Just a suggestion that there's some branches in there. Remember this is fabric, not, not uh, paper, so it's a whole different animal. It's really fun to experiment. I decided to keep uh, painting in the tree itself, but then I decided to move down and put some grass at the base. So I did that, and you can see that I'm using a different brush stroke. It's going up and down and pushing rather than dabbing. And it makes a really nice grassy look effect. You may notice on the left side there's sort of a straight line. That is because in my hoop there's a block of wood that holds the hoop together when it's made. And my paint just kind of built up right there, and I... I'm just fine with that. It looks a little bit like there's a hill going up in the grassy area. So that's just fine. And this is the finished piece of fabric with the tree. It's already been washed and pressed. And it's all ready for someone to do whatever they'd like to do with it. And it will be uh, for a giveaway on my blog. If you like this video, I hope you'll give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed, please do. And be sure and tap the bell to get notification for new videos. This has been Anne. Thanks a lot for watching.